Good morning everybody, welcome back to Blue Roy Movies. Uh, last Sunday's video, The Weekly Watches, I floated the idea about doing my top 10 directors list and had some good feedback from it. A couple of people said they'd be interested in hearing my list, so I thought, what the heck, let's give it a go. Now, I've done some research, I've done some thinking, my, my head hurts. It's been quite difficult. It's took me a while to get this list together. A lot of women are in, people put in, people taken out. But I think I've got now some sort of idea about my top 10 directors. Now, a caveat, I always seem to have to think this when I do a top 10 list, something like that. This is going to be my list. Uh, this some choices here you'll agree on some choices here you probably won't agree on but film is different for all of us your list is going to be different to mine and so it should be so that's the way it is this is my list nobody else's if you don't like it it's tough that's the way it is but this is how it's landed so let's crack right on with it i'm going to tell you my top 10 and I'm going to tell you my favourite film from each of those 10 directors. And we're going to crack on with number 10, Damien Chazelle, born 19th of January 1985. Now, when I was making this list, I was thinking, oh, he's only a whippersnapper, but then I realised that makes him nearly 40. And now it's me that's the old git, but there you go. But Damien, he lands at number 10, but I can only see him getting higher and higher as the year goes on because he's done four films and four films I absolutely love in Barbarian, First Man, Whiplash, but my favourite is La La Land. Absolutely wonderful music. I'm, I'm not a musical guy, but I saw this and I fell in love in the film. The chemistry between Ryan Gosling, Emma Stone, the music, the cinematography, absolutely wonderful. And for me, Chazelle's best film. Really love that one. Uh, next up, I've got at number nine, Alexander Payne, who was born 10th of February 1981. No, sorry, 1961. I was giving him another 20 years then. And he's born to Greek restaurateurs and made out in the movie world. Again, is very much comedy based, which isn't my favourite genre, but his films just have a lot of heart and just make me smile and make me happy. So for that, why he's my number nine choice. He's done films including Nebraska, The Holdovers from last year, Election, The Descendants with George Clooney, but Sideways is my favourite. This is a fantastic film. It stars uh, Paul Giamatti and Thomas Hayden Church. Thomas Hayden Church is getting married. So he goes with Paul Giamatti, his best friend, over to the California, to the wine country, for his stag do. And Giamatti, he wants to go and sample wine and just have a quiet time because he's quite a depressive character. But Thomas Hayden Church wants one last hurrah before he gets married. And the situations they get in are... Just brilliant. Absolutely love this film. Uh, feels one that not a lot of people have seen and or talk about. So if you haven't seen Sideways, give it a whirl. Absolutely fantastic. Right, coming in at number eight is Samuel Fuller. Uh, born 12th of August 1912 and died 30th of, August, of October 1997. Uh, making him 85 years old. He started life as a journalist but turned his hands to director in and never looked back. Absolutely wonderful array of films. Uh, White Dog, The Big Red One, The Naked Kiss, Pick Up on South Street, to name many. But my favourite is Shock Corridor. Uh, now, this stars uh, Peter Breck as a journalist who gets himself committed to a mental asylum so he can investigate a murder in there. And pretty soon the madness turns him. And a bit like One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, if you like that type of film, you'll like this. I absolutely love this film. And for me, the pinnacle 
of Samuel Fuller's career, but all really good films, well worth trawling through his cinematography. Wonderful director. Uh, next up, we've got at number seven, John Ford, born 1st of February 1894, died 31st of August 1973 at the age of 79. A winner of six Oscars, uh, a man who was well renowned to be very prickly when interviewed. When asked what brought him to Hollywood, he famously replied, the train. Now, John he had lists and lists and lists of absolutely fantastic films. Uh, a few that I've highlighted, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, The Searchers, My Darling Clementine, The Grapes of Wrath, How Green Was My Valley. But my pick for my favourite is The Quiet Man, which, against a lot of Ford's war films, uh, westerns, is a lot more gentler film, but a film I really like. This is about John Wayne, who is a retired boxer, who moves back to Ireland, the place of his birthland, and boy, gets a property there. And falls in love with Maureen O'Hara. And it's all about his interactions with how the locals take to this Yank who suddenly invaded their land. And getting off with their women. Yeah, absolutely wonderful film. A film that just envelops me and I get really into it every time I watch it. The Duke in this, again, one of his quiet performances. and Absolutely fantastic. There's a brilliant fist fight in here that's really, really good. Yeah, one I highly, highly recommend. Next up, and a drink, number six. I couldn't do a list without leaving this guy's off. It, I think it would have been remiss of me. Number six, Steven Spielberg, born 18th of December 1946, winner of five Oscars, and single-handedly brought us the summer blockbuster. Absolutely wonderful, wonderful filmography that includes... Close Encounters, E.T., Jurassic Park, Saving Private Ryan, Catch Me If You Can. But for my favourite, I just had to pick the fantastic Jaws. The quintessential, as I say, summer blockbuster. Edge of your seat stuff, so quotable. Never gets old. You'd never think this was a 1975 film if the first time you'd watched it. And I tell you what, the 4K is absolutely beautiful. One of my favourite 4Ks. Wonderful, wonderful colours when they're on the beach. Just a great film. If you've got a 4K system and you haven't got this yet, grab it because it's absolutely amazing. Next up at number five, Fritz Lang, born 5th of December 1890. Died 2nd of August 1976 at the age of 85. Uh, a man at 1933. He was offered the job of head of German cinema by the Nazi, one of the Nazi leaders, Goebbels. But as he hated all things Nazis, he declined that. And in 1934, he moved to America. A man notoriously difficult to work with, um, very harsh on his actors and his staff. But he got results because his slew of wonderful films he made, which include Dinay Belongen, uh, Scarlet Street, M. The Big Heat, but my personal favourite, 1927's Metropolis and the quintessential science fiction silent movie that is groundbreaking at the time and has influenced many, many films over the year, notably Star Wars, C-3PO. If you don't like your silent films, if you're a bit reticent to check out silent films, just give this one a watch and see what you think because... I think it's absolutely wonderful, groundbreaking stuff and a groundbreaking director. Uh, next up at number four, a man who's got two films in my top five, so that's the reason he's on my list. Couldn't leave him out. Ridley Scott, born 30th, 30th of November 1937. So poor old Ridley is getting on a bit. He's well into his 80s and still working hard and... Doing a lot better than I am at my age, but all power to him. He was born in South Shields, so a northeast of England man, which sometimes you forget with all these American blockbusters he bought out. Indeed, he started his career with the Hovis advert. You saw the the kid pushing his bike up the hill. 
That's Ridley Scott, if you didn't know. Absolutely amazing filmography again. He has got some turkeys, but the winners for me far outweigh it. Uh, Alien, The Martian, American Gangster, Black Hawk Down, Gladiator, Thelma and Louise. All fantastic films, but for me, and possibly my favourite film of all time, Blade Runner. What an absolutely incredible sci-fi film. This is so atmospheric. I love the story. Love Harrison Ford in it. Love Rutger Hauer in it as the bad guy. Roy Batterdy, absolutely wonderful. And Batty's speech at the end as he's dying is probably my favourite monologue in film. Amazing, amazing stuff. That's Ridley Scott. Oh, number three, getting into the big top three. QT, Quentin Tarantino, born 27th of March 1963. And two Oscars to his name. Transferred the crime genre for me and any other genre that he turns his hand to. He puts his own special mark on it. Ten films so far. Ten great films. I like even Death Proof. I enjoy that. I can't understand sometimes the flack it takes. But other stuff, Django, Kill Bill, Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs. But for me, top of the tree, Inglorious Bastards. My favourite war film, my favourite Tarantino film, Christoph Waltz, probably my favourite bad guy in a film. Stellar, stellar cast. That opening scene, maybe my favourite opening scene in film. Really, really good. Really, really love it. Right, number two. And a man I always thought would be the pinnacle, but he's slipped down one in recent years, is Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, born 13th of August 1899, died 29th of April 1980, aged 80. No Oscars. <sighs> What's all that about? Can't believe that. In 1979, he did win the AFI Lifetime Achievement Award, at which when he picked it up, he joked, can't have long to go now. And unfortunately, he didn't because he died just a few short months later. But he'd done absolutely brilliant, brilliant films. From the Birds, Psycho, North by Northwest, Vertigo, Dial M for Murder, Strangers on a Train, Rope. The list goes on and on. But for me, from this 4K set, Rear Window with Jimmy Stewart. Absolutely incredible film. A film I could watch time and time again and never get bored with it. Just wonderful. Everybody's seen Rear Window now, Sean. If you haven't seen it, please go and watch it because incredible stuff. Now, like I say, I didn't think Hitchcock would ever get surpassed as my favourite director until I started getting into the Masters of Cinema collection and watching the films of Billy Wilder and they absolutely blew me away. What a genius the man he was. He was born 22nd of June 1906. Died 27th of March 2002. And he won and thoroughly deserved to win six Oscars. Uh, a Jewish man who fled Nazi Germany in the 30s to live in Paris. And then to finally settle in America. Where he bought his film after great film after great film. That includes the likes of The Lost Weekend, Sunset Boulevard, Ace in the Hole, Stalag 17, Witness for the Prosecution, all stellar, stellar films, but for me, Double Indemnity with Fred McMurray, Barbara Stanwyck, Edward G. Robinson. Now, film wise, one of my favourite film tropes, and this is the pinnacle of it, all about. Fred McMurray's character, he's an insurance salesman. He falls for Barbara Stanwyck and plots with her to insure her husband against accidents and death and then to murder him. And the twists and turns it takes, absolutely incredible film. Again, like with all these films, if you've not seen it, give it a buzz. Brilliant, you wouldn't regret it. So that's it. That's my list, guys. What do you think? Let me know, know down below. But, you know, play nice. Like I say, film subjective. That's the beauty of it. We've all got different lists. Give us a like if you like what I've done here today. Maybe think about subscribing. You'll be good.
that's been quite exhausting. See you later.